Hey guys, Titan Goji here, back again to do the usual whenever a new Godzilla movie is released. Join me as I dive into all of the easter eggs, references, things missed, and more that lie within the newest and final installment of Polygon's Godzilla anime trilogy, Godzilla the Planet Eater. Of course, there will be some spoilers mentioned, so without further ado, let's go right into it. The poster is definitely an homage to the Godzilla King of the Monsters poster, which is also an homage to the Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah poster. After the opening title, the film starts with Godzilla sleeping and recharging in a manner similar to Shin Godzilla later in his film. Yuko is still alive, with the nanometal acting as a life support, which is reminiscent of Katsura from Terror of Mechagodzilla, who later in the film becomes the Mechagodzilla's controller with its brain implanted into her stomach, which also acts as a life source of some sort. Another bit of Mechagodzilla trivia I forgot to mention is that the name Mughal can be found in the name of the character Muluelu Galugu. Ghidorah is tied to the Exif's origins as he is a god that they worship. Speaking of Ghidorah, there are instances where you can hear his show a roar for a brief moment, as well as the sound he makes when he flies and when he fires his gravity beams. Ghidorah and Godzilla fight at the base of Mount Fuji, which was where the finale of Destroy All Monsters took place. Godzilla once again goes into a burning form of sorts. There is a scene that shows the bombing of Hiroshima, which is partially what inspired the creation of the character Godzilla. Mothra finally appears in this film, sporting her classic roars as well. There is a moment where Godzilla tears off the jaw of a Ghidorah head, reminiscent of King Kong when he fought the T-Rex, and when Mechagodzilla did the same to Anguirus. Anyway, those are all the easter eggs I could find in this film, feel free to comment anything I missed, and now, before I end this video, I just want to share my thoughts on this rather experimental trilogy of films. Let's start with Planet of the Monsters. It may seem pretty cool at first, considering this is really supposed to be Godzilla's big jump into the anime world, however, the film is definitely a drag and doesn't have enough variety to it, really just watch it for the beginning and the end. Up next is City on the Edge of Battle. Undoubtedly the most divisive entry in this trilogy, and probably in the whole franchise. It seems no one can really agree on what everyone thinks of this one, but here's my take on it. It's a slight improvement over the previous film, yet it's still lacking. The build up to Mechagodzilla was sort of a letdown, and kinda feels the same as its predecessor plot wise. Now for the Planet Eater. This one is easily the best out of the three, though it might not be saying much. There was definitely enough for me to stay interested, I did find myself very invested into what was happening, but the fight between Godzilla and Ghidorah really doesn't do much for me, like it's more of a struggle than anything. The movie also kind of goes into some pretty odd religious and philosophical themes that really caught me off guard, but it did come off as being a bit pretentious and kind of clings to it for too long. Overall, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this trilogy to anyone other than hardcore Godzilla fans, or if you're someone who's just wanting to watch all 30 plus movies. I may have found the Planet Eater enjoyable to some degree, but the problem is that its predecessors are pretty bumpy to get through. It's like having a road trip that involves getting out of Texas. Most of it's just trying to get out, and when you are, it's definitely a relief. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys later.